Hi everyone, my name is Peter Muller and I'm a mixing and mastering engineer based in Germany, Europe. This episode is called Analog Summing. Is it really worth it? Let's find out. Welcome back. There's a controversial discussion going on for years if analog summing is better than digital summing. There are countless videos online with sound examples and opinions for one or the other side. For some people the difference is huge, others claim that they don't hear any difference. Now when you listen to the radio on streaming platforms or physical media, you are hearing music that has been produced in various ways, fully analog, fully digital, hybrid, with analog summing or with digital summing. The big names in the mixing and production scene have totally different approaches. Some of them use analog summing and some don't. All of them deliver a world class sound on the highest level. Now this is good news for both sides as you see that these are only tools to reach a certain quality of sound. Before the transition to digital audio happened, analog summing through a mixing console was the usual way of finishing and summing a mix from multitrack to stereo. Since the turn of the millennium, software based mixing on the computer became more and more popular because the quality of conversion and the plugins became much better. So hardware mixing consoles, if you didn't already own one, were not selling as before. That's when the manufacturers of Pro Audio equipment came up with summing boxes in a rack format. The idea behind it is, at least this is what they say, to give digital audio some analog flavor similar to the sound of hardware consoles. But the truth is that when these analog summing boxes were released, the marketing campaign was accompanied by some statements that many people accepted uncritically and therefore it became part of the general opinion about analog summing boxes. The core statement was, and still is, there is something wrong with the sound of digital summing. That's why you need this box. Now why should there be something wrong with digital summing? In all modern doors the summing is actually perfect, so unless you use a 30 year old software from the beginning of digital audio, digital summing is the most precise summing you can get. But then I hear people say, but we love the sound of analog consoles, then the summing box can't be wrong. Now here we encounter the first problem. A classic hardware mixer circuit has much more elements to color your sound than a so-called analog summing box. Transformers, op amps, line amps, resistors, etc. make the typical sound of a classic console. While some of the summing boxes have transformers, some others can be used passive and transformerless. And here the question arises, what's the point of leaving the digital domain if nothing really happens that will change the sound in a pleasant way? Is it enough to run a signal through a clean analog summing box to make it sound better? Here's another fact. You can't improve audio quality of a file that already has been recorded. It is what it is. You can only shape the sound in one or the other direction. So is the story of the magic summing box just clever marketing? Maybe you also know someone who bought an analog summing box with high expectations and then was disappointed because it had a perceptible adverse effect on the sound. That is because leaving the door to go back in the analog domain can introduce some problems such as deterioration of the audio quality caused by noise and distortion. The panning in an analog console or summing box is not as perfect as in the digital domain. Elements that are centered in digital can be slightly off-center in analog and this affects how you perceive the acoustic summing of the monitor speaker or headphone. That's why the stereo image of the mix can appear slightly wider. There also can be crosstalk between the analog channels which changes the perception of how elements are placed in the mix. That means that there is obviously a difference in how analog and digital summing sound. Some people perceive the imperfection of the analog sum mix as superior, wider and fuller sounding. The reason is that the human ear is not a measurement device and won't always prefer something that is technically sounding perfect. We are looking for that special sonic experience that makes us connect to the music we are listening to. One example is the love for vinyl that some people have. From a scientific point of view, vinyl has an inferior quality compared to high resolution digital audio. For example dynamic range. A 24 bit 48 kHz WAV file for example has technically a dynamic range of 144 dB. Now if you look at vinyl you have a dynamic range somewhere between 65 and 70 dB. Nevertheless, a lot of people insist that vinyl is sounding much better than digital audio. That means that the technical side and the perception in audio quality seem to be two completely different points of view. And it explains the comeback of analog equipment in studios in the last years as we see more and more studios working hybrid with a combination of hardware and software in the process of recording, mixing and mastering. With that being said, let's go back to the question if analog summing is really worth it 
or if it's just a marketing hype or even snake oil. My personal opinion is that there is definitely something happening if you use analog summing. But is this really because you send out channels individually from your DAW through a summing box and back in? If we look at analog summing boxes on the market, we can see that there are units with 8, 16 or even 32 channels. But a modern production these days easily reaches a channel count of 100 tracks and more. So let's say you buy a 16 channel summing box, what are you going to do? Most people will send out group tracks through the summing box, which means that there is digital summing involved in the process. The other possibility would be to send out and print 16 channels and then another 16 and so on until you're finished. Which is kind of time consuming because in the analog domain everything needs to happen in real time. So most of the time the user would choose the group send option. To be clear this is not true analog summing, let's call it hybrid summing if you will. For true analog summing you would need several of these boxes and here's the next trap. The bottleneck can be the conversion. For true analog summing with multiple summing boxes, you also need the same channel count for high quality ADDA conversion. The conversion quality is crucial for summing, so keep in mind that mastering great converters, for example like the Crane Song Head Quantum which I have in the studio here, costs you about 5k only for the two stereo channels. I know there are multi-channel converters out there for 1 or 2k, but here you are in danger of making this your bottleneck. That's why you should look at high quality multi-channel converters and the real pro audio, not prosumer units, will be much more expensive. So for real analog summing with each channel individually, you need several analog summing boxes and multi-channel converters and all this together is a huge investment. Are the improvements or let's say changes because we learned that these are not measurable improvements are really worth it? In my opinion, a huge channel count of individually summed channels is not the reason why some people like analog summing. It's not the separation of multiple channels sent through this box, it is the sound coloration, the texture and saturation through transformers or other parts of a circuitry the specific summing mixer has. You can reach the same goal with outboard gear, for example a bus compressor, with transformers or tubes on the mix bus or on individual tracks. Personally I would not take part in a blind test where we have one version of a track which was mixed through an analog summing box and the other version through a high-end hardware bus compressor and stereo for example. It's impossible to hear which is which even if they sound a little different. And even if you have the money for a huge analog summing setup without any bottleneck, it makes your life not only ridiculously expensive but also very complicated. Today's studio work is all about flexibility. You may work with different clients and different software. One day with Pro Tools, the other day with Cubase, Nuendo, Logic or Studio One. You will work at different locations and may take your projects with you. A complex routing setup can really affect your workflow in a negative way. Time is not only money, using technique in an effective way makes more space for the real creation process. Because in the end it's all about the music. We are people in the pro audio industry who serve the artists and make their art sound as best as we can. So let's wrap it up in two sentences. If your mix doesn't sound right, analog summing is not the answer if you're working in the box and are looking for that analog flavor. Instead of getting one or multiple summing mixers and converters, you're better off buying yourself some really high quality hardware such as a bus compressor, channel strip or EQ and bounce your mixes or individual tracks through them. Ok, that's it for now. If this video was useful for you, please check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel and get notified when I upload a new one. You're also welcome to leave a comment down below the video. Let me know your opinion or ask any question related to the subject. See you next time.